I have for a long time only had one camera that I use for all of my filmmaking and freelance content creation work. And that is my Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. I love that camera. It does just about everything that I need it to do and it covers the majority of my work needs. So why did I purchase a Sony FX30 to use throughout 2024? Let's talk about it. Well, I'm going to cut straight to the chase and say I purchased a Sony FX30 largely to be used as my YouTube specific camera, as well as acting as a B camera on some of the bigger shoots that I have planned. The main thing that really drew me to the FX30 over another Blackmagic camera or something similar, because there is so many options out there and I spent a long time looking at these options. And that was because of the autofocus and the built-in stabilization that the FX30 has. I wanted a camera that was a little more forgiving and easier to use in more run and gun type situations and talking head stuff like in my studio now. I'm using the FX30 to record this video and I've been using it for the last few YouTube videos. It's genuinely so much quicker quicker and easier to throw this up on a tripod really quickly, leave it on autofocus and know that no matter what I do, my footage is going to be completely sharp, even if I am shooting wide open, which I tend to do with my YouTube video. I've got the Sigma 18-35 to on my camera right now, set at f1.8 wide open. With my Pocket 6K Pro, I'd be faffing around trying to ensure that everything is sharp when in complete manual focus and having to use the phone app to check my focus and a monitor and reach forward and change the lens and it was just a little bit of a pain and I'd worry about if I moved back or forwards just a tiny bit that I would come out of sharp focus and if I'm honest it just felt a little bit too tedious at times to use the Blackmagic for YouTube videos. Maybe I am just being a little bit lazy when it comes to shooting them but I'm a firm believer that the best camera is the one that most easily allows you to shoot whatever it is that you're aiming to do and so for me the FX30 was an incredibly useful buy in terms of usability for YouTube. I don't have to worry and honestly, I've just felt more motivated to create YouTube content and to make videos because it's so much easier to just put a camera up, as I said, sit down, record, give my thoughts. And it just seems like it takes up way less time than if I were trying to do the same with the Black Magic. I've owned the camera for a couple of months now, as I've said, I've used it on my last few YouTube videos, but I've also had the chance to use it on a couple of freelance jobs where I felt that it was just the more appropriate camera to use over the Blackmagic. I've used it a few times for real estate jobs, the ease of use on a gimbal paired with excellent dynamic range that is more than enough, and the 60 frames per second at 4K means that it's often actually my go-to real estate videography camera over the Pocket 6K Pro. However, sometimes if I'm doing a much larger and more expensive property in the center of London, which I sometimes do for that. I am still pulling out the Pocket 6K Pro, shooting in 6K RAW and really utilizing the workability and dynamic range of Blackmagic RAW to really show off a high-end property to the full extent. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that the FX30 does look as good as the Pocket 6K Pro. It doesn't, but to a lot of clients and to sort of the untrained eye, you really wouldn't be able to tell that much of a difference. And it's really nice to have the option either way as to which camera I would like to use. The other case where I've reached for my FX30 over my Pocket 6K Pro was for some event videos where I really wanted to once again utilize the FX30 on my Ronin RS3. It's just easier to put on a gimbal. In this case, I actually wanted to use autofocus as well because I knew it'd be a lot of quick run and gun style footage and with the camera being on a gimbal, autofocus and in particular, the amazing eye autofocus that this camera has actually did turn out to be the absolutely perfect setup. I haven't used autofocus in a long time because I've had the 6K Pro as my main camera and it genuinely feels like a luxury again going back to a camera that uses great autofocus. I don't actually have any native lenses for the FX30 either. I've largely been using it with my Sigma 18-35 to and the Sigma MC11 adapter and if I'm honest the autofocus works as good as I would expect a native lens to work. It seamlessly picks up my eye, it locks in and focuses on it instantly and the tracking is equally as impressive. The fact that I can have this autofocus functionality whilst using lenses that I purchased for my Blackmagic 6K Pro, which is an EF mount Canon mount camera, it's just great. It's awesome to have that kind of usability without having to spend thousands more pounds on brand new native Sony lenses, which are generally some of the most expensive on the market. <laughs> The 
The only downside that I've really had so far to the FX30, which feels like a little bit of a step back from the Pocket 6K Pro, other than obviously the image quality, which I spoke about briefly. It's a slightly different design of camera in terms of what you want it to be. The 6K Pro is more designed at a filmmaker cinema. This for me is more corporate videography freelance work usable but the only thing that i've really noticed that's different otherwise is that obviously it doesn't have built-in nd filters and it doesn't have built-in xlrs now the xlr audio inputs can actually be sold very quickly by purchasing a xlr audio handle which sony themselves sell i haven't done that yet but i do intend to do that soon purely for the ease of use i can plug a microphone like this into the camera rather than having to go through a separate recorder but obviously for me it's the lack of nds that obviously cannot be solved quite as easily i've had to revert back to using ND filters on the front of my lenses and of course this isn't really a huge issue. I already have a set of ND filters that I can use from previous cameras when I didn't have built-in NDs but it certainly is a lot nicer and a lot more convenient to have the built-in NDs of the Pocket 6K Pro and it is something that you really notice and really miss just having that little button that you can press to quickly change your exposure and dial it in as opposed to having to rotate the ring and worry about any sort of issues with that. It's just easier to have them built in. Realistically though, these are minor issues for a camera that is largely, as I said, going to be for my YouTube channel and as a B camera on some larger productions. For the price point, you can't really gripe at the fact that it has these missing features. I wouldn't even call them flaws. They're just missing compared to my other slightly more expensive camera. And there is actually one other reason as to why I decided to purchase the Sony FX30 to use throughout 2024. And that's because I want it to be my film scanning camera. Now, if you've seen any of my videos before, you know that I actually love to shoot photos on film. And up until now, I've always had my film developed and scanned at the same lab. And I really do genuinely like these results. I've never really had issues, but I've decided that I'd quite like to start scanning some of my own film and seeing what kind of results I can get. The FX30, although it is designed, of course, as purely a cinema style camera designed purely for videography, it has no viewfinder, and it's certainly not marketed as a stills camera. Despite this, it actually has some really quite decent photo specs. The FX30 has a 26 megapixel sensor for stills, which is more than enough for getting some high resolution film scans and has actually been very useful for me for taking some photos just of a friend's clothing brand, producing results that are more than usable for social media and website type purposes. The low light photo performance, of course, is not comparable to the higher end stills, and there obviously isn't as much detail as a 60 megapixel sensor, and it does only have an electronic shutter, so you can't use any sorts of strobe lighting with the FX30, but none of this is realistically an issue when it comes to scanning film. I'm gonna get a sharp 26 megapixel digital scan for quite a lot cheaper, than a lab and I can play around with it and do my own edit on it in the scanning process to really hone my own sort of taste and style with the scan. So in the near future, I am going to be working on a video and a setup with my friend Kyle building a nice little home scanning setup using the FX30. He has previously released a lot of videos on home scanning setups spanning from the more expensive to the incredibly budget price ranges and so I'm excited to work with him on a setup that I think will be great for me on a budget. Killing two birds with one stone, I get a camera that can work great for YouTube, exactly the usability that I need and also I can start scanning some of my own film at home. To me, it seemed like a no-brainer. Overall, the Sony FX30 for me, I think has been a really great purchase so far. The image quality from what I've seen is awesome. The oversampled 6K down to a 4K resolution S-Log3 footage does look great. It's actually quite easy to match that footage with my Pocket 6K Pro as well, if I do want to use it as a B camera, and it has the added benefit of just great autofocus, built-in stabilization, and an incredibly travel and run and gun friendly level Level of usability. I'm going to be working on a full review of the Sony FX30 in the near future, trying out the video and the photo capabilities of the camera in multiple different scenarios, so do subscribe if you want to see that in the future. I'm incredibly happy that I decided to make this purchase. It's made making YouTube videos both more enjoyable and also a lot more efficient to make, and I can't wait to start scanning some film with this camera also. That's all for this one. I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, feel free to please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Have you used this camera? Do you own one? Are you thinking about picking one up? I'd love to hear from you. And if you do want to see some more of my content, maybe consider subscribing. Stay safe, everyone. Stay happy. And I'll see you in the next one.